Welcome to the American Made and Paid Show, the home of free speech and independent thought. The big story is freedom of speech is really in trouble. The far left knows that at any time they can call for a sponsor boycott of anyone they despise. It is right here, right now, where you'll get your weekly dose of unfiltered truth. It's non-negotiable. Pre-existing conditions will be protected. This president has said this as a candidate. Insight. Very few people I know could have handled it. We can never, ever let this happen to another president again. An information that challenges the American way of life. Welcome, everybody, to the American Made Page Show. Thank you guys for joining us today on a wonderful morning here. And uh, just wanted to say that, you know, thank you guys for over 10,000 downloads. We are well over 60 episodes in. You know, we do this weekday show several times a week, try to be as consistent as possible. I just want to say thank you, everybody, for listening to the American Made and Paid show. Uh, leave an iTunes review if you haven't done so already. Share it with a couple of your friends because I know that we are on the eve of something great. Now, for some of the, you people who are like, hey, you should evolve, you should do more stuff, yeah, but this show has only been around for about two and a half months, and we've produced a lot of episodes, a lot of content for you to consume. Stay tuned because eventually the show is going to, transform. It's going to be more sophisticated. It's going to have video, live feed. I can't wait for the days where we have call-ins because then that's just going to be a three-hour show right there because <laughs> one question will just be, you know, long and inflated. But I got to get my Bible knowledge up, got to get my history up, got to get my political knowledge because it all stems from the same place. So thank you guys for listening. Today, Professor Dreg wanted to bring up the subject of Jesus, socialism, and the Good Samaritan. So let's talk a little bit more so about that and how that pertains to, are we talking about it, how it pertains to race and, and politics today or what? Well, no, I, I, I wanted to talk about this in regards to how it applies to the law. Okay. And and how um because I am convinced <laughs> and I'm not kidding when I say convinced I am convinced that that the US Constitution is based on Christian law. And uh, and that's why you know, I want to get into the 4th amendment which is the uh right to, you know. So there's a thing <laughs> that we all you know accept like when you get pulled over by a you know cop you allow him to search and seize you right right and then that's so anyway so the fourth amendment actually doesn't allow for that what is the fourth amendment let's define it for our listeners so we're all on, on point i actually don't even quite know what that amendment is is it mm -hmm. remaining silent or is that the fifth amendment no that's the fifth oh, okay. but the fourth amendment is um it's about search and seizure so, okay um, no, let me read it to you because <laughs> it's um because you really have to read it um just just um <coughs> do 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 because if you don't read it uh word per word people are all like yeah you know all right do, well do, 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 because i don't want because Everybody's oh, it's exclusionary law, blah 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 blah, and all this other stuff. Man, I can't pull it up. Uh oh, there's probably a reason for that. <laughs> they don't want you to know the truth. Hmm. Well, how does that pertain specifically while you're pulling that up to the Good Samaritan? And I guess you could say gospel law because that's technically what it is it's from the new testament from the gospels um so how does that how does that relate well okay so yeah i can't find it no i can't, I can't pull it up but basically the fourth amendment um there's something called malicious prosecution <laughs> and malicious prosecution literally <laughs> comes from the fourth amendment which basically in a nutshell says this you got to have a warrant in order you know like have you ever heard of a search warrant yeah yeah in order to obviously invade someone's yeah, like privacy for the day invade, yeah so the state the government cannot just go on to a person and just say hey i'm gonna stop you and check you for contraband or you look like a drug addict so that's also you know what's funny that's what jay-z said in his second album i think too hmm 
something about I how really you got, I got to get more hip to pop culture. <laughs> well, maybe you don't, but anyways, go ahead. I didn't mean to derail you. So what does this mean for, um, for law? Okay. So, ah, oh my goodness. I, I, I want to, cause I, I like to read the laws word per word, but I can't find it. But anyway, but that's neither here nor well, here, there. Here's the thing. So Let in me a nutshell. Okay. So we have, come to a, a, a point where we just think it's acceptable for cops to search us yeah okay. and, and and this is going to kind of lead into why i believe mlk jr is a hoax <laughs> because uh I, I i know somebody who um was trying to help somebody right, right? and it's just his uh you know, anyway, so long story short, there is this athlete, a very good athlete, okay. semi-pro football player. He is a Christian guy. And like all athletes who are black, <laughs> I mean, but this is just a weird phenomena. And I always tripped on on this because, you know, as a kid, and I, and I said this many times on the podcast, I never understood why every single black athlete who was really good really gifted with with talents as they say right uh, always believed in jesus and always had to pray and just i always thought it was nonsense i was like god this is insane we're gonna win it doesn't make any sense oh and and i said this before they used to pray for the other people who were gonna lose yeah <laughs> they never understood why and that I'd, anyway but it, so long story short this guy is is one of those dudes He's like a Christian guy and, and he believes in helping people. Like if he, he sees somebody on the streets or something, he don't know him, but he's going to help him. Right. And, and uh, so anyway, when he was helping this dude, the cops showed up and basically beat him up. And, uh, and, and so they went through his pockets and everything else and there was nothing on him. But either way, in order to justify the beating, uh, they just... Um, they uh, got him on uh, Penal Code 148, which is, which is uh, based, resisting arrest. That's what it's called, resisting arrest. Sure. And uh, anyway, so everything was falsified. But either way, so uh, the DA let him go because, you know, basically it was a Fourth Amendment violation. Like, he just can't search anybody just for helping. And this guy, he wants to sue for um, a violation of his freedom of religion. Because, you know, he believes in, in helping people who are down because it's kind of like he believes in being the good Samaritan, right? Which is, I didn't know, but this is a real Christian story. Yeah, yeah. It's a <laughs> biblical parable from Jesus. But I want you to finish no, your I point thought, because how, how does this relate? So how does this relate to the Fourth Amendment specifically? Okay, so here's the thing. Because uh, I, I kind of want to get into uh, uh, how, how this this works. So, for some whatever reasons, the Constitution forbids that somebody just automatically allows you uh, or any government agency mm -hmm. to just go ahead and judge you by okay. the way you look. Because that's basically what... Well, and, and that's the basis for search and seizures, right? It's because yeah, you look a certain way, so they guilty. stop you. Yeah, yeah. It's usually because, hey, you look like you've got contraband in your car. That's why we're stopping you in the first place. But based off of that, you're not able to, right? Is, <laughs> yeah. is that correct? And, and, so, and that's what... The, see, because... He, oh, yeah. So, but, so legally, the only way to have a warrantless search is one by consent... So like if I allowing you to search, yeah, yeah it's like, hey, and that's why most cops will say, Hey, can I search your car? And then they're going to say no, because if they say no, then you broke the law. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, I always say no. <laughs> Wait, so can I start saying that? Or is that something that they're going to be like, no, 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 we have to. No. Well, you can say no, you can say no. And you should say, I always say, should. No, so, but what, so what, so let me ask you this question before you finish your point, what does a search warrant have to do with consent then? Well, well, see, that's, that's the point. Do. Okay, so exactly. in order to get a search warrant, and, and this is why what happened to Trump is so, so wrong, because you have to go to a judge with evidence uh, stating why you need to search somebody's home. Like, why should we violate the Constitution? 
right? So that that's the whole point. Because it's against the constitution to go and sure. search a person, search somebody's personal private property. You right. can't, unless you have really good cause, like real evidence that a crime is happening. And so when they did that against Trump, they lied. That is like, you cannot do that. And that's like, man, like it's amazing what these people are getting away with. But anyway, so how is the fourth amendment biblical? And it goes back to the whole story of, uh, and this is why MLK Jr. was technically wrong. Uh, because the story of the Good Samaritan was this. In a nutshell, because I honestly don't know it uh, like the way you guys probably know. But from what I do know, the first guy was like some kind of like rabbi. You know, okay, so a traveler is going from, Jerusalem to Jericho or Jer Jericho, whatever, you know, he was yeah, going yeah, to of course. the city. So he gets beaten up and left to die. So the first guy that walks past him is like some like Jewish rabbi or something like that. And uh, the, the, the priest just walks right past him <laughs> and lets right, him. Right, right. Yeah, the, the people that are supposed to be helping people, right? So-called yeah. good And then the other guy, I believe, was, I don't know what a Levite is, but. A priest. Oh, is that what a Levite is? Yeah. Okay, so then a Levite... Descendant of Aaron. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, and then, so what's... what's and then I guess the Jewish guy was just a regular Jewish guy. So the one Jewish guy, but then a dude from Samaria who the Jewish people hate, hate was yeah. the one that helped the Jewish guy. Help their own. Yeah. Right. That's the and point then, of the story. Yeah, is the fact that it's not because he's just some random guy. It's the fact that the Jewish guys didn't help him and a Samaritan helped him, as yeah, in somebody from a different too, country. But there's really more, like, there's a deeper meaning. So that Samarian dude uh, went, you know, to wherever, because I honestly don't know where he went, but he went to some innkeeper or something like that. To, right. To whatever. And, and gave him money so that he would recover and be fixed up and everything. But not just that, but he goes, but this is the thing, and this is why I know without a doubt that Jesus didn't like debt. He was against debt. He was cool with credit, but he was against debt. He was like, <laughs> I got to hear this. So he what was, he was that? like for credit the same way American Express does credit. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? Like, uh, so, start a business on it and then you'll be good. I'll give you money back. Well, 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 okay. So with American Express, if you buy something, you got to pay it that same month. Yeah. You got to pay it off. Like you, you don't pay it off over years and you pay it immediately so anyway that's american express that's how american express uh, well that's how american express used to work i have no idea how they it work. doesn't work like that now because i have an amex and i don't i mean i pay my balance but i don't pay it off completely if i can't right at the moment I yeah mean, see like in the old days american express was unique was yeah. because you had to pay it off immediately so you knew if you had an american express card you but but that actually comes from that story so so the Samaritan goes like this to the guys, like whatever, like you fix them up, don't spare any expenses, whatever. If this money doesn't cover it, I'll come back and pay you the difference. Ah, okay. so and, and that and that was key. Like that, that's a key point that that I, I don't think uh, people really know. And and you know, like, because I study MLK Jr. a lot because I want to make sure that I am not wrong about him. Um. So anyway, and then so that was one that that's the economic part. But the other part was some lawyer. <laughs> right. I'm not kidding you. Some lawyer asked Jesus, "Well, what does that even mean? Like, who's your neighbor? Like, you know?" And he was asking about that because remember how we were speaking about uh, illegal immigration. Yeah, and how how Jesus wanted borders and stuff like that, but he wanted you to help, but help them in their own land or whatever. Da 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 da. And he didn't want like the money taken out from there. So in theory, he'd be against remittance and stuff like that. But that's something different. But anyway, but based on that story, um, you know, the lawyer was asking, well, who's, you know, who's your neighbor? And then I guess the parable would be the neighbor is the person who, who, you know, shows you kindness or cares about you or, you know, whatever that love thy neighbor stuff is. Right. So, but anyway, but the thing is like this, 
MLK Jr. took that road and he goes, I understand why the Levite and the Jew <laughs> look, you know, didn't go didn't over. Help, like, didn't help, help the hurt person, yeah. And he was literally justifying why it was okay not to help him because he goes, well, he goes, that windy pass was really dangerous. And he goes, I walked and when I walked it, I can tell that it was, um, you know, you just don't know. Like, what if, if, the, if the Levite was to help him, what if he would have got robbed himself? Yeah, I think that that's, that's probably what the human, if you saw a stranger lying on the floor, you know, that's probably, <laughs> that's probably the thoughts that would come into your mind is prejudice. That, the, the thing here is prejudice, right? The reason why they didn't help. But then it's ironic because that's one of their own. It's not, you know, it's not like it's a Samaritan that's on the ground that's hurt that needs help. It's a Jew. Yeah, it's it one was of your fellow men. It was Jew. <laughs> right. So, and then, but MLK Jr. takes it one step further. And he goes, what if the guy was pretending to be hurt and then, you know, and being part of the act? You know what I mean? And then they're setting it up. So it was, it's natural. And he goes, and it's okay for for the Jew and the Levite to walk past them because they don't really know. You know what I mean? And so it's excusable sure. that they don't know and blah, 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 blah. But see, but that's, that's my point. What was, um, um, yeah, man, MLK Jr. was, what was, wait, but so are you in agreement with him or do you not? I don't really, I'm not of understanding. Not. It's because the thing is like this, you cannot see, this is the problem. That's just an excuse, though, because then yeah, that's what exactly. anybody would say. You cannot yeah. excuse these behaviors, and that's the whole point of the Fourth Amendment ah, of the Constitution. Okay. Got it. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure what your point was because you kind of went around in a circle, and I was like, so is, are you agreeing with MLK? No, 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 no. he's disagree? wrong. See, because, okay. and, this is, and it goes back to the Fourth Amendment because appearances is why uh, people always want to violate the constitution. And uh, wait a minute, I understand what you're saying now cuz that's the same basis why a cop would search you even though cuz it's, it's all appearances. based on appearances. It's all based on <laughs> appearances. Based on appearances. Based on appearances. Yeah, no, okay. I see, I see your point now. Okay. It took me a second, but then I'm like, what's this all adding up to? But I, I get it now. Okay. <laughs> well, but it was it's amazing because like Yeah. I, I, you know, because like you're taught that MLK Jr. is this great man, like a great man. Like well, he was a fornicator. Well, and a, a, a yeah, no, and he was a lot more than that. <laughs> he did a lot of crappy, shitty things. It's amazing. So his interpretation of the Good Samaritan and excusing like the Levite and the Jewish guy, just because he walked the road, he goes, oh, I can see why it's so dangerous. I can see why they did it. <laughs> Because it's dangerous out here. You never know. You know what I mean? I'm thinking, how can you even come up to that conclusion? It's literally like the opposite of what Jesus was talking about. Well, it's, it's fear of the unknown. And it's, and it's the existing prejudice that we have for our fellow man, even if they're considered one of our own, that prevents us from acting with the best of ourselves. And consequently, as a society... I think the Constitution took this into account, that aspect of, hey, you know what? Don't obviously search and seizure because you feel like this person is suspicious or you feel like this person is, is guilty of something. So you know what? I'm going to go through his stuff. But the, that's the irony of it is that it, it, um, it, it, it actually amplifies people's prejudice. You know what I mean? When, yes. Like the misuse of it is the assumption that because this person, like in that story of the Good Samaritan, could be dangerous, that's the justification for not helping them out. That's the reason why we can't associate with this guy. I mean, this guy is inebriated. He's, he's on the side of the road. Somebody clearly attacked him. He's not going to attack you back, and still you're not going to help him out. But, but that's the thing. And then, but he took it so far <laughs> that he <laughs> put credit down to help this guy you know what i mean it's like hey man go go to town give him the works because what what if the innkeeper goes hey man you owe me like 10 more shekels because <laughs> he only gave him two he right. gave him two denarii or whatever those things are called and what if the guy came back and says, hey man it was 12 and he would have paid him the extra 10 he would have yeah 
and and that's see but that's the point that's how strong jesus felt against just search and seizure seriously that that's that's i mean because he was like hey man instead of judging somebody you got to show these people love to the extent where you're going to trust another stranger not to rip you off and showing this guy care. And in the real world, right, if you want to even think of it from a karma standpoint, think about what would have happened if that guy recovered in, in, in the best case scenario, right? And he yeah. went and told all his friends that, you know, a Jew or sorry, a Samaritan had saved his life. Well, for one thing, one of two things could have happened. People would either freak out and be like denying of it, or it would actually create more brotherly. Because, you know, those were two warring people is the thing. Those people aren't friends. You know, throughout their yeah. history, Jews and Samaritans don't get along. I mean, they descend from similar lines as everybody does, but there's a, they're, they're known as... as uh, robbers. Yeah, yeah. They have a lot of animosity between them, right? So... That's the thing. It, it, it goes back to this idea that I read in the New Testament where uh, God is not a respecter of persons. And what he means by that is he don't care who you are because everybody makes their prejudice, makes their judgment based on race, based on appearances. Race is just another word for appearance if you really think about it. If we're all of one blood, race is really just appearance. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Right. So in the New Testament, when God proclaims that he is not a respecter of persons, that's what he's talking about. That could also have a double meaning, right? Where it's like, not only does he not care what your race is, but what does you being of a certain race have anything to do with anything? <clears throat> right? Well, so, no, but that, I mean, it's, it's all the same stuff, but that's, that's what I'm saying is that Fourth Amendment rule is there because in the first amendment you're not supposed to discriminate based on national origin race any of that stuff and yet it needs to constantly be reiterated see one thing i want people to understand is it's not that we don't remember all of these amendments is that they're in order for a reason the same yeah. way the, the same way the bible is in order for a reason too because it all supports each other it's all consistent with everything once you have the fourth amendment and say you are being searched then comes the Fifth Amendment, where it's just like, hey, you can remain silent, you know, obstruction of justice, right? Which doesn't happen unless there's a guilty plea out on your name, right? Yeah. Somebody's trying to convict you of something. So you need that protection. And well, I, I want to go back to the First Amendment really quick. Yeah, yeah Because the First Amendment protects you to practice your religion. Right. And the reason why that's so important is because this country was founded on the Christian belief of, uh, which is interesting because the Good Samaritan story is literally asked by a lawyer. <laughs> no, but it's true. And that's what it says in the Bible. Like some Jewish lawyer was trying to trip up Jesus or something like that about, uh, you know, yeah, I have to reread that part. I don't remember about, that. about, uh, yeah, it's about the lot. Like, dude, it was a lawyer trying to trip up Jesus about, you know, because like the whole thing about loving your neighbors yep. and loving everybody is because, dude, everybody has trouble with that. <laughs> it, it's, um, it doesn't make any sense because in theory, because, you know, we believe in borders, we believe in sovereignty. So how can you take care of everybody? Well, you can do it the same way the Good Samaritan did it. Right. He didn't try to say, yeah, I want to become a Jew. He was always going to be a Samaritan, but you can still show love for other people and still respect their laws, their boundaries and, and everything else that needs to be respected. But anyway, so, and also more importantly, if you think about it, remain anonymous. Yeah. And that, cause that you, random um, act of kindness that you talk about when people used to leave food in the trash, it's the same deal. Yeah. The same deal. I don't know who they are. You Seriously, don't know who they are. I have no idea who they are. All I know is that who somebody saved your life. Somebody, <laughs> somebody else showed you kindness and saved your life. And that's the important thing. It actually impacts you. Imagine how that Jew must have felt when you went home. It's just like, huh, somebody it, did something well, see, nice but, for me. But here's the thing. Like, it doesn't like, it, it takes, well, it took me like 30 some odd years to figure it out. But that's the point. But it didn't make, you have said this yourself on this show that it, it because of that, 
it didn't make you a crazy person. So even though you didn't know it, you didn't you didn't go and kill anybody, or at least I, I don't think you did. But no, 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 no. And I never killed anybody. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, no, because I gotta speak a little bit lower. But anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> I got reprimanded. <laughs> reprimanded. That's funny. No, but anyway, so uh, but but going back into this. For, let me read the Fourth Amendment. I, I've pulled it up now. Okay. The Fourth Amendment is this. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrant shall be issued but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Right. Uh, and, and that's it. So, <laughs> but that's, that's literally comes from that good Samaritan story. It really yeah. does. Because the thing is like this, <clears throat> everybody believes in like, you know, like if you see somebody, right. That's the whole point of a neighborhood watch. You see something out of the ordinary, you call the cops. Right. And, and that's in theory supposed to be good cause. But the thing is like this. But because of the basis of you calling the cops. Yeah. And then everybody says it's probable cause. But here's the thing. The whole point of the Good Samaritan story, not just the economic aspect or, or, or you know, but the thing is, is to honestly show kindness instead of being afraid of somebody, instead of being afraid of, of being robbed, why don't you go ahead and ask that person if they need help? Yeah. Because maybe they're lost. Maybe they're in your neighborhood because they're lost. Right. It's, you know, it's they true. don't know where it, they're it's going. It's be very likely a real thing. Yeah. And and even if and even if they're there to rob you, if you approach somebody and say, "Hey, look, are you lost, buddy?" It's going to diffuse the guy because he's going to be like, "What?" Am I, you know, like it confuses a robber because usually robbers are. Yeah. You know, but then Well, they're they're ready they're ready for for they're ready on the offensive, right? But if you yeah. go over and you're like, hey, man, you need help? Uh, uh, no, I'm just trying to break in. A, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, oh, no. And then he'll automatically go somewhere else. Yeah, he'll, well, leave. he'll <laughs> leave you alone. It's like, oh, okay. I mean, that, that, that's a very... I, I'm, not con, I'm not telling everybody to just go up to any stranger you see, right? I'm not... I'm not I, for people who are listening to this, I'm not condoning that you, you, know, you, you do that for every bad person. But don't... The key thing here is don't prejudge and don't be afraid because the reason why there's this kind of disparate impact too amongst cops. And when we talk about cops not being educated, it's because of fear. They're ill prepped, they're ill informed and they're afraid. You think these people know what goes on? It's like you go up to somebody's car and their windows roll down. It's like, dude, that's a scary ass situation. Yeah, no, but that's true. But this isn't for women. Because you have to say things like this. Women should not be going to strangers. It's just how it works. And um, <clears throat> without sounding sexist, but it's the truth. Because, you know, come on. If a woman comes up to me, it's like, hey, what's up, baby? You know what I mean? And that's what you're thinking. That's what bad people are going to think. But, and, and, I, and I honestly don't know anything religious about this, but I think this is why, like, you know, women really aren't talked about too much in the Bible because these are stories like no woman should ever go to a stranger and say, oh, because, you know, you know what I mean? Like, you shouldn't do that. Well, the Bible, the Bible does have strong women in the Bible, but they were godly women, right? And the thing is, it's not that the Bible is putting down women. It's just that the Bible acknowledges that both men and women are different. And at the end of the day, that we actually need to be respectful of those differences, but also understand that it's not like a man is better than a woman. They're just different. There are certain yeah, roles right. that women exactly. should not have. That, that's all we're saying is that there are certain roles that women should not have, right? It's just <laughs> not right for them. It's not traditional. It's not what would be considered the appropriate. There is, there is no way a woman could have been a good Samaritan. 
it's just impossible because you know why do you say that that's a little bit well because well because it's 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 not safe like a woman yeah. cannot be a samaritan it, because one she shouldn't have been traveling in a dangerous area alone well she's there you go i mean she's asking for trouble but two you have to be physically strong enough to pick up a dying body off the floor and and there's just no way you know like that's a lot to ask of a woman you know, to put her own personal safety, da 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 da, because every man has man strength, so they have a chance to fight something off. They really do, and so um, because every man has the ability to get away from another man, right? Because you hit him once, you stun him, and then you run, you can get away. So a guy can always, because like, what makes MLK Jr.'s assessment of the Good Samaritan story is. He's justifying the way the Jew and the Levite, uh, you know, didn't help. Right. Because they, but then the thing is like this. If a guy is attacking you, just hit him once and run. That's all you need because it's not like there's a great, you know, like you got a five-second head start. You guys are going to tire out about the same time. Just run. See, women can't do that because women are always going to get caught by a guy. Because remember I was telling you about, about uh, track and field, how it's kind of boring. Like all women's sports are boring to me because... Well, clearly the biological differences, even though people may argue against what you just said, are being very, very evident because there's those two transgender athletes yeah, that are I racing think. in the car and they're beating all the girls. It's like, that's okay. No, not just beating the girls. They're setting records. <laughs> they're, they're men. Records that have those are boys. Those are boys that think they're yeah. women. Is what that is. And I don't say and, that to be insensitive. I say that because that's a spade. Yeah. No. And that's a joke. Come on. Are you kidding me? It, it's a joke. Come on. These effing two boys are 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 literally breaking girls' records, and they're proud of it. That's insane. That is insane. But anyway, so I don't want to uh, get yeah, too... Yeah, let's not derail it there. But... But, but the thing is like this. The whole point uh, uh, of the Good Samaritan literally is rooted in the Constitution. Didn't even know it. Like, I honestly didn't know that. Because, you know, there's even hospitals called the Good, you know, good Samaritan Hospital. <laughs> like, like yeah. no, I'm kidding you. There's one in San Jose. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've heard of them. It's, yeah, it's Good Samaritan Hospital. That's a biblical story. I didn't even know that until just, just recently. Because when I was working on that case, you know. And um, so anyway, and I was like, what, what the hell are you talking about? And he's like, oh, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's my religion. I'm thinking, yeah. he's a Jew? You know what I mean? And, and then, so anyway, because I didn't know that was a Christian story. Until, until this morning when I was looking it up, you know, because I wanted to uh, uh, do a little bit of research for, for the show. And I was like, holy crap, this is a Jesus story. And that, I thought it was a Jew because when he said Samaritan, I thought, you know, old Jew story, you know. But, and, um, but anyway, yeah, I was really shocked that this story even existed. So anyway, so long story short, um, getting back to, to the Fourth Amendment. And why we have to go back to the Christian roots of this country. Mm -hmm. Because the Good Samaritan really lays down a lot with economic principles. It really does. And, 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 and we spoke about this before, about how blacks used to be all Christian. But then they, I heard people were telling me, dude, they were Quakers. And I don't even know what Quakers are, but he goes, yeah, Quakers are like Pentecostals, like always shaking and on the floor. <laughs> he goes, it's the Quakers. They were, and that's like the wrong type of religion. And I was like, like, I have no idea about any of that, but I do know they were all Christians. And when blacks were Christians after slavery, there were Christians before slavery, but when they were, had freedom, they were the economic powerhouse in this country and the people who were at the bottom were the chinese and then you right. know they were buddhists or whatever <clears throat> but then as soon as the christians started believing in the state <laughs> then they became broke <laughs> and all criminals all uneducated and at the bottom and that's and that's blacks 
eighty percent of all blacks believe in, that the state is where it's at, not in Christian principles. Right. So that the whole Good Samaritan story teaches us about being not just generous, but how economics actually works. Because the thing is like this, in the Good Samaritan, he took him to the hospital or the inn or whatever. I guess in the old days, there were no hospitals. You know, the doctors just showed up at the inn. But the thing is like this, that was paid in full, but with the promissory note on top of payment in full. (laughs) Can you imagine that? Imagine healthcare having been paid up front Mm-hmm. And on, t- cause you know, now like people have insurance, but you know, usually you go in and get the medical treatment and then you pay afterwards. Right. But how Jesus described it was the dude paid up front and then gave him a promissory note, you know, for things that might not be covered. That's insane. That's amazing. But, but see, blacks believe in the opposite of that. Blacks believe in, you know, like, hey, you know, give me the medical treatment first and then I'll pay you back. Eh, maybe. It's not just insurance in itself that the guy covered. He covered any potential cost, opportunity costs. Yeah. And the insurance. Yeah. Like, it's like well, if it's more, we'll pay more, you know? Yeah, no, but like, my thing is, what if this innkeeper goes, you know what? I'm going to give him a teddy bear. I'm going to jack him up for like a couple more denarii. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just frivolous things. Well, I gave him the good sheets. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he could run up the cost. I mean, we don't know what happened, but that's the point. Jesus even allowed the guy to run up the cost if, if possible. And I don't know if he said that because Jews are cheap people, but you know what I mean? Because I, mean, you know, like, I don't know about that. But. Oh, dude, it, they're like Indians, you know, from India. Oh, man, if you ever do That's business with those people, dude, yeah. they will haggle and haggle and haggle. You could even agree on a price. And they will still and, haggle. No, no, no. After you do the work, it's like, well, you know, I met some guy that could do it for like 30% less. Give me the disc. I'll give you this much money. Even after you guys agree, dude, I'm telling you, man, <laughs> Indians will do that to you all day and all night. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, even though I don't like perpetuating stereotypes, it is true. I've only had that experience. But, but, but I had you- a guy on the phone literally was like, he agreed to it. And he's like, wait a minute, can we do it like after? I've been like, no, that's not how it works here. Oh, but, but see, but that, but that anyway, but, but, and I think that's why that story was told because, you know, Jewish people are no like the merchant of Venice is, you know, Shakespeare and, and it's just, or there's a, something called, oh, I got Jew down, meaning like haggled, <laughs> you know, like just, just yeah. haggled to death, you know? And uh, I know those are bad things to say, but there is some truth to it from biblical speaking. Like they always haggle, 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 haggle. And, you know, I, and I think Jesus was against that. You know, just pay, just pay what, just what's pay. owed. And that's that. That's how economies work. I mean, and, yeah, and, get the best deal that you can. But at the same time, look, you know, instead of wasting your life haggling, just enjoy life. Don't be afraid. Like, just enjoy your life. But that's what black people do. Like, if you look at what black people are doing today and why they're at the bottom, they have no understanding of Christianity anymore. In the old days, in the 1800s, they understood it, which is why they were successful. And hell, yeah, and, and I'll say it till I'm blue. The very first self-made woman who was a millionaire, self-made millionaire, was a black woman from the 1800s. Not, the, not Oprah, not some kind of weird Hindu person. You know, it was a real honest-to-God Christian woman. You want to know something also that's pretty interesting that I got to say, a lot of prominent abolitionists, also black men and women, right? But here's the interesting thing about that. It's because they believed in these principles, right? And what freedom really represented. Now, here's the deal. To some degree, you have black people like that today, but they are the Bible believing type that don't feel like you're metaphorically and somewhat 
truthfully chained to the government as in you're not the property of somebody else but when you live off of welfare and you depend on uncle sam and take care of you when i hear a lot of conservative pundits call that somewhat of like an urban modernized plantation there's some truth to that yeah no, no i'll take it one further <laughs> no because trust me on this when the Chinese people started believing in, in Jesus. Like there's, um, I forgot that group in Hong Kong, but there's a group in Hong Kong called like the Jesus Sumerian, whatever. Yeah. Like some, there are a bunch of weird, I don't want to say weird Baptist, but, <laughs> but it's, it's something weird like that. I don't know how they got to Hong Kong, but, uh, but they, they honestly help people, but, in through economic means and all, it's a weird thing like how they do it but they're successful like hong kong literally carried china for a long time you know what i mean and and i think that's where christianity spread was was through hong kong but i i, I honestly don't know enough yeah but, but but going back to what i do know which is the streets and, and everybody on the streets um when a black person honestly believes in god yeah. You know, but not an athlete, but like a normal person. No, 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 no. And I, I, I told you about this story a little bit before we started the show, but go ahead. Yeah. Well, no, no. But when they do believe in God, they always tend to have money. Like those people in Georgia, those two counties in Georgia that are all pretty much black, yeah. but they're all Bible believing blacks and they're all successful. But, you know. I don't know if you wanted to. No, because you're right. You're not owed. See, the thing about that Samaritan story is that that is a perfect story about credit with no debt. That's a perfect story of credit with no debt and compassion, right, for your neighbor. And, and, and a good, also a good indication of brotherly love, too. Even though, and, and this is where the whole, when I said this earlier about how God is not a respecter of persons, because there's a point to him being a Samaritan and that guy being a Jew. Because you're not supposed to associate yourself with people like that. But what Christianity did, and I said this not just for economics and business, but also for how we determine sovereign nations, is that it allowed us to have diplomatic relations at a basic level with people without thinking, hey, you know what? You come from this land. We don't like you, and we're going to try to take your land. If anything, it civilized people. Well, that, that's, that's an, the obvious thing, but here's the thing. Without it, you would still have tribalism in, in its purest form, whereas I don't, you, it's not that you don't even associate yourself with different people from different nations or whatnot. You actively want to go fight them. Yeah. Because that's just how people were before Christianity. Oh, before Christianity, exactly. people who were different from you, you would fight. There was no question. If you saw someone from a different tribe, it wasn't, let's get along. It's, no, let's go kill them. That's just how see, it worked. See, and that's why, see, that's why I got to learn the Bible because that's exactly true. Cause I, that's why I'm against fighting. Like I hate organized fighting. I, I just, I'm not for it anymore. No, you I'm used to fight. Self. Well, you fought, you fought for protection for to, to well, stay alive. I know. But, but, but the thing is, it's like, well, I mean, I don't know. It's just a weird thing. But, uh, but long story short, fighting is only for self-defense. I believe that now. So it's, but in the old days, you know, whatever, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, but no, but see, but that's, and, and I said that before earlier, but you said it better than me, but, but the thing is, it's, uh, it's, uh, these people are warlike people, you know, like, and it's, and it's to this day, if people understood everything associated with the fourth amendment we would not have wars we would not have you know because like what's happening right now iran is is building this nuclear arsenal right you know and, and and why because they hate the way the jewish people are so the jews have a right to defend themselves but they shouldn't have the right to actively seek war against other people and why is this happening? Why is all of this or any of this happening? Well, because neither one of them are Christian. <laughs> Seriously, you got Muslims and Jews at each other's throats. Right. 
I mean, and that's always been like that for history. And a lot of people will say to me, no, 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 the Christians were the same. I was like, nope, 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 nope. The Spanish Inquisition was not what people are trying to say it was. Mm-hmm. Because the whole point of the, the holy order of the whatever Inquisition, it was for defense of the priests who were being slaughtered. And, and that's how they came about. And eventually it got bastardized. This right. Well, because that's what happens bastardized when you give... Now. Right, a single thing, single person, like power and all that. That's what happens, you know. There's nothing in, and that's usually when I get the when I get the argument from people about Catholicism and Christianity is like, I, I for one need to brush up on my church history or Christian history. But the thing is, nothing about the procedures with Catholicism is in line with with the Word. It's it's just not. It's like you don't confess your sins to a priest. You do it to God. What and, and here's the thing, and and the reason why this is important to mention, right? And as one aspect is, what does this man have that is able to absolve you of sin when he is a man himself with sin? You see that that's the that's the discrepancy. Was <laughs> I, I never understood that? But why why do you confess your sins to a priest when he's a man? And why is the Pope the person who is basically this? This is the true meaning of blasphemy, actually, because it's in place of God and the ability to forgive sin, which no one can do except God. But the, the Pope is able to do that. And that's why I never understood it. And that's why I don't, I don't know why, like what, there's over a billion Catholics in the world. It's, it's just like, yeah. where are these people no, getting this from? No, no but you want it, But that's what made mother Teresa great. She didn't believe in the Pope. She went against them. She did her own thing and the Pope couldn't stop her. <laughs> But that's the, because, dude, I'm telling you now, it's like, if you study Mother Teresa, dude, she was a bitch. Nobody liked her. <laughs> Nobody liked Wait, her. Wait, I don't know much about her. What was the story here? <clears throat> okay. Because I, I used to believe this. The greatest people who lived in modern times was uh, like MLK Jr. But now we know that was a hoax. And Mother <laughs> Teresa. But uh, because, you know, like, Everybody used to give credit for to MLK Jr. for for like civil rights and all these other things, but yeah. now we know it's a hoax. But Mother Teresa was the only person on the planet who could literally stop war. Like everybody feared her because her whole thing was like this: she just wanted to help people. That was her whole thing. Her whole get down was, "I'm just helping people. I'm going to go to the most ratchet place in the world and I'm going to help them." So yeah. she went to Calcutta, India. And just started helping the poor kids. And uh, so, you know, like in the 80s, there was a, a war going on in Somalia, like, you know, a big time civil war. She went into this country, <laughs> like unarmed with her sisters. Yeah. And then she was like, you know, because the kids were getting killed. So she walked in there and both sides stopped for three days and allowed her to scoop up all those kids and bring them back to india huh. and then and then after that they started killing each other i'm thinking what the hell but that's the point it's like like but th- those are the kind of things she would do and uh and and she would just try to help people and, and without worrying about money or anything else like that you know she was able to do these things and uh and uh, you know i don't want to say like africans are you know, superstitious, but that's what I used to say. It's like, well, you know, Africans are real superstitious. So obviously they're going to fear mother Teresa because, you know, she's just some crazy old woman who believes in God and and, <laughs> Jesus and people are afraid of her. And, and so that's, I said, so when you couple superstition with their own ignorance, but now I'm thinking, Jesus, what if this woman was really touched by God And was able to do all these great things because like when you really study her, it was hard for her to get permission from the Pope and the Pope kept fighting her saying like she couldn't do it. She couldn't do it. Couldn't help this. Couldn't help that. And and because, you know, the Catholic Church is rich. It's the richest entity in the world. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Richer than because, you know, obviously they're getting all this money from everybody, like a billion people just continually giving you cash and, and offerings so That's tax free, by the way. All yeah, of no, but it's and from all over the world, they got all this art, they got everything. So, dude, the Bank of the Vatican, it's 
dude, they got <laughs> money. And uh, it's the richest bank in the world. Everybody knows it. So the thing is like this, what do you do with that money? And that's the thing. So she didn't care. She was like, you're paying, but the Pope kept telling her no. And she did it anyway. And, uh, and there was no point in stopping her because she wouldn't stop. And, uh, you know, it just until she once, and then once she died, then obviously it's back to normal. And that's what everybody, I think that was the game plan. We'll write it out. <laughs> you know, like we're not going to be a helpful organization. We're just going to write it out until she dies. And then once she passed away, you know, all those gay scandals and, you know, molesting priests and things like that, it, it just yeah. got out of hand. And, um, so, you know, it, it's, uh, so like in theory, Mother Teresa would be a good example of what Christianity can do in its true form, not the way how like the Pope says or the way MLK Jr. says it, it's because like there was a time I used to believe in unions, like labor unions, but now I know it's like, ah, oh, this is bull. <laughs> You're not just because I was, you know, their consultant, but you know, because like when I was a kid starting out, I just believed in it. I believed in all that crap. And uh, why? Because it, it's, um, Hey, look, if, if we believe somebody's being cheated and, and that's the whole point, the union is based on a bunch of what ifs, the same reason why we allow cops to violate your constitutional rights. It's all based on a bunch of what ifs. Well, and it's, also, it's also, this is a way to think about it too. It's a very reactive form of making laws as a, as opposed to preventative aspect, right? Of getting people to actually be better. It, it's, a, you know, that's the thing is that, cause, cause, cause here's the thing that even the Bible says, right? Avoid foolish questions. Cause people will come up with all kinds of silly reasons why they should or shouldn't do something. Right. It's like, yeah. well, what if, what if like, so like, you know, for example, all those car codes we talked about, how there's like 20 or 30,000 of them. Yeah, what if like, somebody like hits your tail light and, and like doesn't hit your tire? It's like, well, who cares? The solution is still the same. Still got to deal with yep. it. And that, that's kind of the case here because here's the thing. Think about anybody else in that Samaritan position, right? They'd be like, oh, well, what if it turns out that his leg is broken in extra three places? What if it turns out that we got to set his bones? It's like, that that's the matter. foolishness we're talking it's like no it doesn't matter because you know why the outcome is still going to be the same i'm going to cover the costs this man is going to get better but yeah. people concern themselves with all these little technicalities that the bible actually blatantly tells us to avoid because you're missing the point here but that's how people are they're just like well no because uh it costs more or well it's going to be like it doesn't matter. And that's the thing is I think a lot of people, unfortunately, that, that is, they, they, they lack a bit of the foresight because it's just common sense. It's like, well, why bother with it? Right. You know, but that's, that's just something that what I'm trying to say with that is that that's how our laws are written. If you look at biblical law, gospel law, and even the constitution as it stands, they're very simple laws. The yep. first 10 amendments exactly. are also just like, the Ten Commandments, it's like if you had brotherly love and you also loved God and people were just like, well, why, why isn't rape on that list? Why isn't child molestation? Well, <laughs> that kind of falls under brotherly love. You exactly. Would, and, you know, it's the same thing with our Constitution, right? Free speech, preservation of oneself and one's identity, right? The ability to be able to practice, you know, uh, checks and balances, uh, making sure that, you know what, people who – aren't just searching you just because they're prejudging you. It's like, hey, you kind of look fishy. I'm going to look through your stuff, make sure you don't have a gun or you didn't steal anything. Fifth Amendment, making sure that there's preservation of uh, your ability to be able to maintain your innocence. If there is an investigation, like they're very simple laws. They're common sense laws. But people are thinking like, ah, oh, well, what if this happens? Like, how come prostitution's not on the list of Ten Commandments? Well, because the whole aspect of honoring God and honoring your father and mother and honoring your neighbor kind of falls under that. You know what I mean? People, yeah. people, and the thing is, this is something I read about the Bible, which I told you yesterday, that it's, it's not supposed to be complicated, is because the truth of the matter is, once you follow it and you, you obviously ask for guidance, 
God is not the author of confusion. He says that himself. It's simple. I gave Moses the first five books and these 10 laws and people make them complicated. You find reasons for why you can't follow them as opposed to reasons to follow them. Oh, we're stuck in the wilderness. Man, what are we going to do? There's no food in the desert. It's like, dude, I'm raining manna from heaven every single day. Why are you whining? And that's, that's the thing. That's, that's part of why there are these issues is there's prejudgment going on. People don't love each other, brotherly love. And people overcomplicate things. It's not supposed to be complicated. It's really yeah, simple. No, you're right. No, it's really, I really simple. I'm guilty of that. No, I, 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 we all are is what I'm saying. <laughs> but isn't it great that when it comes down to the purest form of how to live your life, as well as how to make money and how to govern, it's based off of simplicity. Like this, here's the thing. We talked about this a lot on the show. Don't get in debt. That solves 90% of all, and I'm not talking some, I'm talking all financial problems, yep. all economic business related like pits that people fall into. Just don't spend money you don't have. I mean, I get it if you're going to use your credit card to purchase something that in the short term, that's going to obviously make you better, make you more money. I've done that too, where I've invested and I've used credit. But don't go spending money on like a vacation. It's not going to make you any money. And that, that's what people need to understand is our laws or our, sorry, sorry, our values determine our laws, which also determine how people react and not react to them. Part of the reason why people are so crazy is because we've made laws so complicated that people are like, I don't know what to do. I should just give up my rights and my freedoms. Yeah, because no one understands it anymore. <laughs> If you I didn't know, point out to me that Civil Rights Act of 64, I don't think I would have caught it. I don't think most people would because no one reads the law. It's too complicated. Yeah, no, and, but that's the whole point. So, and that's like, to be fair to MLK Jr., I don't know if he even caught it. He could have just been a Ponzi dude. You know what I mean? Like he could have just been part of a scam only because he... He might was, have also been blackmailed. Think about yeah, it. Think well, about because he was he was caught in, in a compromising position. Yeah, yeah. This guy her. was what a Southern Baptist minister, and was committing all kinds of fornication and adultery and all. Like <clears throat> that. That's pretty. That ruins things, you know. Yep. That and and the thing is, it's the same with a lot of people who die as martyrs. JFK, MLK. They're all kind of in the same category. And I think that arguably, even though Lincoln was pretty awesome as a president, had he lived longer and died of old age, we probably would have found something about him we didn't like. Yeah. That's just how people are. And, that, and what I'm trying to say is that's actually okay. The point is we need to understand the truth and not let existing prejudice, whether they be good or bad, affect that. See, right now there's good prejudice towards MLK. <clears throat> People regard him as this big, like you said, this, this, you know, revered figure, I ironically, he was a reverend, but revered figure <laughs> and, 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 and person of virtue. And it goes both ways. But when we think of somebody like, like Lincoln, same, same deal. He was assassinated. So you die a martyr, you, you die a good person for the things that you stood for. But Hey, had Lincoln lived out his life, Maybe he probably became some cranky old man and who knows? And he's not perfect is what we're saying. Yeah. That doesn't dismiss anything. I'm saying that knowing that <laughs> about that's... people liberates you. That's why when I look at Trump, Trump is great. Guy's got a lot of flaws, but it's okay because he's done good work. Well, see, but here's the difference between Trump and I believe everybody else. Trump flaunts his flaws because he wants people to understand that he's flawed. I think that's, that's, I think he wants people to know he's a flawed person. And, uh, and I believe he's sincere about the love of the country. He's like, Hey, don't love me, love the country. You know what I mean? So, and I, and I think that's a powerful message because everybody, and, and this is like, especially being an atheist and because every atheist will know this, every person that you see like from these mega churches or mlk jr they want to be worshipped themselves they want to be known as martyrs and great people and it's like why you're not i mean because the thing is like this a lot of people don't know who mother Teresa is even to this day 
does she die a saint? Nah, she's just a dead person. Like, it's not like, you know, like, but Pope, the Pope, uh, the Pope Fratinel, Pope John Paul, right. he, uh, he's a saint. He didn't do anything great. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't stop any wars. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't do anything. You know, Pope John Paul II or the third or whatever he was, he's a real saint for doing nothing. So they worship him. And, uh, you know, I'm not yeah. doubt, uh, you know, saying Catholics are bad, but, you know, you don't worship people. But that's what a lot of Christian people do. They worship people. Like they put them on this pedestal when they shouldn't be doing so. And that's why I think the Constitution is, is so brilliant because it allows people, especially if you look at it from the Fourth Amendment aspect, it allows yeah. you to be an individual to go unnoticed. Like it allows you like, you know, like, hey, look, you should be able to uh, just do your thing and not be hindered just because you're different and everybody should be like that not just you know because nobody should be worshiped like because think about it what's the opposite of like search and seizure well like those celebrity preachers who do nothing good but mm -hmm. they're pretending to be christian or i don't know any famous jewish rabbis but <laughs> or like those imams that always want those uh, attention like like you know like if you know anything about new york uh i'm not gonna put like okay so there's a guy named brother polite he's some type of like egyptian preacher <laughs> brother polite is that his name yeah polite p-o-l-i-g-h-t okay so he he's uh he's you know some black dude but the thing is some like this black dude yeah, well, because this is like a total black thing. So, in in especially on the East Coast, they call it the the conscientious movement, okay. where you have all of these religions and these preachers of these religions, and all they're doing is being worshipped by other blacks. Like you have no idea how messed up it is in the black communities, where they literally think these black people are their gods. Huh. So it, it's like so. If, I um, Brother that. Plant's not like that. I'm just. But like the, you know, the, where he comes from, from the streets, mm -hmm. there's a lot of like, cause you know, again, he's an, yeah, geez. Like he really is like an Egyptian God. <laughs> like he, that's what he, that's what he preaches. So he's like an Egyptian kind of guy, like an Egyptian preacher. Right. Right. And then so, um, so like, you know, you got the black Hebrew Israelites and then he got these Egyptians. But, but see, he, but the reason why all this is irrelevant, and we have to say that all this is irrelevant, is because right there, see, the thing is, the thing is this, not just God, but Paul knew, because Paul was like an educated intellectual, one of the apostles, mm -hmm. he knew that people would act like this. You know why? Because people were acting like this back in his day. And he flat out said, God is not a respecter of persons. Therefore, it doesn't matter. It says plain as day. There's no difference between Jew and Greek. What that means is because those were the two most prominent people at the time, the Greek Empire and the, and the Jews, was that he was addressing both sides and saying, guys, it doesn't matter. The fact that you concern yourself over this is the problem. Yeah. Well, but, but my point was this. People tend to make themselves gods. Yeah. And, 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 and then the people like normal people like myself, we no. look at these people and we go, you guys are idiots. And then become atheists because we just don't believe, and, or you could be like the majority of black people and start worshiping your preacher. Yeah. Because th that's what happens because, you know, remember that guy, Creflo dollar. I don't know if you heard of him. The guy who asked for donations for his jet. <laughs> there was a black preacher that went on tv and was like i need 65 million dollars to buy a brand new plane you know i, I don't did he get it i don't know i forgot i know oh, he got oh, a lot oh, of money oh, oh, oh. he got a used one is what ended up happening mm, but that, okay. that it's, still, it's that's not the point the point is like the, his people revere him to the point where it's just like even if his practices are a little questionable, people can't see beyond that. And you're not wrong. You did say this earlier in some other episodes that there's a lot of Christians out there who are genuinely good people but are naive. And yeah. the, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. It's but just that's my point. See, now, black people have given up on their faith. 
They just have because in the 1800s, they honestly knew. It's not just their faith. It's they knew the word. Like they knew the word of God. The most important thing here is not like faith obviously is important, but you got to know it. You know, you got to know what's in it. But uh, yeah, sorry, we have to wrap this up. We do have to wrap this up soon. But do you have any final thoughts on this? I was going to tell you something though. Yeah, go ahead. Because the Bible's changed a lot though. The Bible hasn't changed in terms of the King James. The Bi- the King James is the most accurate original. In fact, it is. It is the ordained inspired word of God. That the problem is we have a lot of different versions out there that are uh, for lack of a better word, it's corrupted. It's corrupted the original word, right? Now they're similar, but here's the thing. The way it works is you can't just completely change up everything. Otherwise, people would be like, "Ah, oh, we can't accept this. This is heresy." But you change it little by little, year by year, which is what they're doing. Then slowly but surely, if you like, read any new t- new ver- new translation of the Bible post nineteen nineties, it'll shock you how different it is from the King mm-hmm. mm. Like, and and the this is my point. Yeah, go ahead. My communities. This is deliberate because as long as they don't know the word. They're never going to get better. They're never going to fix themselves. Right. It's an impossibility. And it's really hard. You go anywhere in Oakland. Those <laughs> churches are like empty. Really? They just are. And everybody, every preacher is now somehow affiliated with some kind of nonprofit tied into the government. Yeah. And of course, they're not going to teach the word right. Why? Because their money is dependent on the government, not themselves right <laughs> which is anti-christian yeah but either way yeah cool. so anyway final thoughts i got none <laughs> all right well because <laughs> i'm no. depressed about thinking about it i'm thinking crap this sucks man <laughs> seriously it sucks hope. because think about it in the old days it was because even the whole history of lynching started by blacks and all this other it's insane how we change so much as a right. people and uh yeah i don't know it's just bizarre so man it's just depressing because i'm black and you know what i mean it's like you just depressing because i'm black yeah because it, it, it sucks it sucks to see like your people just at the bottom dude. it just sucks you know what i mean it's like the solution's so simple yeah i know what you mean it's just pick up your bible and you you know and just I, I hope I my my final thoughts for this is I hope you start going to church and you uh, I don't see that coming anytime. <laughs> yeah, when you're you got to you and your your oh yeah for the baby. No, I'm gonna make her go to church, but you know for us we're I'm already too old. No, but the other thing too is like I'm not see this is the point that kind of sucks because then somebody goes, dude, you're gonna be God will take away all your money and then make you go to church. But but my thing is I've never been poor. You know what I mean? Like, neither have I, but you know, (laughs) no, no, but, uh, but the thing is like this, I I believe, uh, because like, dude, I know for sure God's real, but because of my past and everything else, I don't know. It's just a weird thing. It's like, uh, I don't know. It's like, it's, it's, yeah, it's a weird thing feeling like because it, it, it's 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 um no one i don't know enough about the new testament other than what i know from the constitution but the thing is the reason why i, I still just because i don't know like just from the old testament part there's something more to this than just what we know right and, and that's the thing it's like i don't know it's like you know like like when i look at a preacher because I actually, you know, when I met the counselor, because she was yeah. running for politics, we went to this church. <laughs> it was a cool church. And uh, some Baptist dudes, and, and these guys are teaching stuff. So, yeah. th- like, if I was to go to, I'd go to this dude's church. But, uh, but anyway, so long story short, but in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm like a billion times smarter than you. And a billion times richer than you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I don't want to. 
Like, you know what I mean? It's a weird concept, but I'm too old like, myself to go to church. <laughs> yeah, but we can talk about this in further detail. We do have to wrap it up, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you for tuning into the American Maiden page show. Hope you guys got something out of this with the Fourth Amendment and the Good Samaritan. And we'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Thanks for listening, guys.